not my will, but thy will be done, almost presupposing the same battle that Jesus had in Gethsemane that we've looked at very closely. She was troubled. Can you imagine when she was nine months pregnant and she had to go from Nazareth to Bethlehem, nine months pregnant? She was troubled. And when she got there, there was no room in the inn. You can be sure Mary was diotorosal. She was troubled. And they had no place to put him except in a feeding trough, a manger. That would trouble you. She was troubled. And then we know she went to the temple eight days to commit Jesus for purification. And we've already looked at Simeon who said, through this son, your soul will be Pierce, that's the meaning of this word, dial terrasso. It means all the way through, dial terrasso, greatly distressed, troubled. We see that all the way through Mary's experience. By the way, Mary isn't prominent in the New Testament. It's almost like she's in the shadows over here. She, she's sort of in the shadows over here. To be sure, with Jesus, when he was 12, didn't leave with the rest of them. They had to go back and find him. A mother, she'd be troubled, wouldn't she? Absolutely, she'd be troubled. Trouble, trouble just covered the life of the Virgin Mary because of Jesus. Jesus, her virgin-born son. She would be troubled. And do you imagine that when Jesus spoke in Nazareth, in the home synagogue, in the hometown, he was standing up as a rabbi presiding in a service the whole family would have been there, would they not? Sure they would have been to hear my boy, my son. What happened? He became so piercing and he was attacked upon the lack of faithfulness of the Jews. They wanted to kill him and push him over the cliff. And I've been to that very cliff in Nazareth. And you go over that cliff, I can tell you, it's all over. Boy, that would have troubled Mary. And what about when the family went to Jesus while he was teaching in the middle of his ministry there in Galilee? And his family, his, his brothers, four brothers, at least two sisters, they said, man, he's out of his mind. Have him to come out here. We'll take him home. And he wouldn't even go out to greet his family. Mary was troubled. Troubled, right? Right? Mothers, you understand that. She would have been troubled. It was a mystery to her. She understood. She, she had inside information. Make no mistake about it. But still, that didn't simplify her high and holy calling, did it? all the way through trouble 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 you've been listening to the winning walk with dr ed young beloved let us love one another for love is from god and everyone who loves is born of god and knows god the one who does not love just does not know god for god is love first john 4 7 through 8. Corey ten Boone was a Dutch Christian whose family helped hide the Jews during Hitler's regime in World War II. There's a movie about her life called The Hiding Place. I recommend it. When she was younger, Corey loved a young man she believed would become her husband. Instead, he married her best friend. Heartbroken, she received consolation from her dad. Corey, you are a victim of blocked love. You can take that love and keep it locked up and become bitter, or you can release that love and shower it on others. She chose to release her love in Jesus' name and to have a ministry that would impact millions. Is there a love blockage in your life? Don't become bitter and miserable. Remove the blockage so that you can have and serve others in Jesus' name. You've been listening to The Winning Walk with Dr. Ed Young. We hope today's message has encouraged you to build your life on the proven truth of God's Word. And we'd love to help you stand firm for the truth of God's Word at this critical time in our culture by sending you Dr. Young's 12-message series, The Church Awake. This resource will equip you to live a distinctive, countercultural life for Christ in these difficult days. So call now to request the Church Awake as our thanks for your gift to reach more people with the proven truth of God's Word. Call us at 1-800-350-WALK. 1-800-350-9255. Thanks for
for being with us today on The Winning Walk. Listen in tomorrow as Dr. Young shows you why you can trust in God's protection and providence. Let's see, if something costs less, but people are happier with it, that sounds like something to look into, and that is MediShare. And maybe you've heard switching to MediShare to pay for health care can save many families up to 500 bucks a month, and that's huge, but it's also true people are way more satisfied after making the switch, too. The member satisfaction rate for MediShare is double that of the typical health insurance plan. Double. MediShare works. It's been around for 30 years. Members have shared more than $7 billion of each other's bills. People love having telehealth and a huge nationwide PPO network. So, yeah, really, you can save a ton and like it better. Imagine being happy with how you're taking care of your health care. So if you're self-employed or part of the gig economy or you just want a plan you're happy with, you can call right now and get a price within two minutes. See what you can save. This is a very, very smart use of two minutes. Here's the number you need. Call 833-44-BIBLE. That's 833-44-BIBLE. 833-44-BIBLE. 90.5 KTXG Greenville, Dallas. The laugh of a baby. Some only believe that life begins when the baby is born, but that's just not so. Psalm 139.13 tells us that God knits us together in the womb at conception. The heartbeat begins in the womb, and the unborn baby is able to respond to sounds and touch. That's why it's our duty and privilege to fight for the sanctity of life. Thank you for joining that fight from AFA. In Family News, I'm Robert Thornton. President Biden says Hamas terrorists have murdered at least 14 Americans and other American citizens are being held hostage by the terrorist group. In a White House address this afternoon, the president also confirmed that the U.S. has already begun delivering critically needed munitions and military equipment to Israel and the Pentagon was reviewing its inventories to see what else can be sent quickly to boost its ally in the war against Hamas. Fox's Jennifer Griffin reports about the United States' support of Israel, including smart bombs. Israel's Air Force took delivery of the bombs from a U.S. air base, we're told. The U.S. is rushing aid to Israel as the squadrons of fighter jets left the United States in the last 48 hours. And the first tranche of munitions are already on its way, according to NSC coordinator John Kirby. The Pentagon has reached out to U.S. defense industry leaders to accelerate existing contracts for weapon shipments to Israel. That from a senior U.S. defense official, they told us that on Monday. Retired Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin, FRC's executive vice president, appeared on Washington Watch to talk about the conflict in Israel following the evil terrorist attacks on the Jewish people by Hamas. He believes it was due to an intelligence failure by Israel. The internal turmoil that is taking place in Israel, the uh, the squabbling in the Knesset, and the the, the many many uh, political parties that they have there, I think they took their eye off the ball. He talked about the peace talks between Saudi Arabia and Israel possibly being disrupted by Hamas, which is funded by Iran. I don't think that we should make the mistake of having any great expectations of the Saudi is becoming friends with Israel or with America. I think they'll play the game to the extent that they have to. He also addressed the Biden administration's belief that climate change is more frightening than a nuclear war. That is not true. It is simply not true. One EMP, one EMP fired over the United States will destroy about 80% of the United States, an electromagnetic pulse. Finally, he said the same thing could happen here due to our own political infighting. Texas is celebrating a low abortion rate, but as AFN's Charlie Butts reports, there remains a need for improved enforcement mechanisms. Data from state health officials show that only 22 abortions were done for the first five months of the year and were not elective abortions, but those committed for the health and life of the mother. Kim Schwartz of the Texas Right to Life Committee tells AFN that's good news. Now, it's important to know, too, though, that there are still illegal abortions that aren't being tracked. We see from state data that there are significantly fewer abortions, and we want the number of elective abortions to be zero, whether that's recorded or not. There are women who are obtaining abortions in other states. 
but there's another aspect that needs to be addressed. The hidden story behind these reports are the illegal abortions that we still need to turn our attention toward with the illegal websites that are selling pills to women in Texas. They're mailing abortion pills to women's homes and dorm rooms. Then there are the abortion pills smuggled into Texas from Mexico and peddled to pregnant women. Enforcement is a problem since there are district attorneys in large left-wing cities refusing to enforce the law. Texas Right to Life reports the legislature in the next regular session might wish to deal with it by giving the state attorney general more latitude for enforcement. I'm Charlie Bucks. The ground shook in parts of Texas yesterday, KXAN-TV reports. A 4.0 magnitude earthquake happened about 75 miles southeast of San Antonio. Another occurred about 30 miles west of that location and was a magnitude 3.5 according to the U.S. Geological Survey. Two other quakes struck West Texas. The first one was a magnitude 3.0 and the second was a 2.9. Fracking is blamed for some earthquakes in Texas. This is a process used in the oil and gas industry to extract fossil fuels. That's a wrap on news this hour. We appreciate your listening. And we do thank you for your support. For American Family News, I'm Robert Thornton. It's the subject that no one likes to talk about, but which impacts everyone. Death. If you're a believer living in fear of death, take heart. Today on Turning Point, Dr. David Jeremiah reveals why Christians can face death without fear, confident of what lies beyond. Continuing his series on the rapture, the great disappearance, here's David to introduce today's compelling message, If We Die. We'll get to our study in just a moment. I do want to keep telling you about this book because everything we're talking about every day is in this book. And this book is yours for the asking when you send a gift of any amount to Turning Point during this month. The rapture could occur at any moment, even today. If it did, would you be ready? In The Great Disappearance, 31 Ways to Be Rapture Ready by Dr. David Jeremiah. He explains exactly what will happen before, at the moment of, and after the rapture. In 31 short, easy-to-read chapters, Dr. Jeremiah answers questions like, <coughs> Will children be raptured? What will happen to our bodies at the moment of resurrection? And will those left behind still have an opportunity to receive Christ as their Savior? Drawing from decades of biblical study, Dr. Jeremiah answers all these questions and many more, not with sensationalism, but with solid biblical truth. This is Motivational Prophecy, inspiring you to live boldly and expectantly in today's world. Request The Great Disappearance by Dr. Jeremiah, plus the Perhaps Today bookmark. When you give a gift of any amount in support of the Ministry of Turning Point, be rapture ready. Request The Great Disappearance book from Turning Point today. Please ask for your copy of this book when you send your gift. And thank you for helping us continue uh, to teach the Word of God in this very needy world. Well, let's begin our discussion. You know, we've been having such a great time talking about our fears. It's interesting to me that as we've gone through this, I can identify in my own life some places of fear that are part of each one of these things we've talked about. All of us identify with this. One of the reasons why we come and we want to talk about this, want to learn about it, is because it's so much a part of our life. You can't be alive and not experience these things. We've talked about a number of different kinds of fears. You might be interested to know that on all of the major lists of what people are afraid of, and I think this is probably not thought through very carefully by most people, the number one thing on almost every list is public speaking. Now that would say that people are more afraid of public speaking than they are of disease. I don't know that I believe that, but at least in the moment when they fill out their little questionnaire, they believe it, probably because they've been asked to do it and it strikes terror into their heart. But second or third on almost every list that I've seen during this time of research is the fear of dying or the fear of death. And that's because nobody knows what to think about it. If they don't know the Word of God, if they don't know what the Bible says, death is this big mystery to them. I remember reading that Woody Allen once said, it's not that I'm afraid of dying, I just don't want to be there when it happens. 
he had apparently given some thought to this because he went on to contribute this encouraging line. He said, I do not want to achieve immortality through my work. I want to achieve immortality through not dying.